weather Christians. While the sun's shining and the flowers are blooming and the air is clean and everybody's doing well and everything's going okay and the bills are paid and, and you're getting to enjoy life, why, you, it's easy to serve God. But what if the storm comes? What if everybody leaves you? What if you get accused of things that you didn't do? What if you lost everything that you had? The devil took it away from you. God allowed him to do it. What if you lost everything that you had? Would you still serve God? Now, it's easy for us to sit here in church on Sunday morning and go, Amen, that's me. But I'm telling you, I've been in church all my life. And I've seen people say amen one Sunday and be gone the next. I remember watching a man that at one time was my Sunday school teacher in this church. And I, of course, I admired him. I looked up to him. Had his family in church. He used to take up the offering and serve on the board and he taught Sunday school and anything that we had bus ministry and he'd worked in the bus ministry and anything needed to be done well he was here and I didn't know what was going on at the time you know they don't tell us little kids but I remember one time he was standing there in the back and he was fixing to come down and take up the offering and I'm sitting there about where you guys from South Carolina are I was sitting back there and I remember, I, I just kind of was sitting kind of sideways like this, looking at everybody. And I remember the preacher said, Who's ready to go home to meet with Jesus if the rapture was to happen today? You'd be ready to go say amen. And everybody said amen. And that man stood there like this. And I noticed that. And I went, Why didn't he say amen? That was strange to me. Because he normally would have, he would have said that. Next Sunday, he wasn't there. Then I'd heard that he had been going back to the taverns, cheating on his wife again, again. Right back to the old vomit that the dogs returned back to. And he hadn't been back since. I don't know if he's still alive or not. But he hadn't been back. And that just kind of gets a hold of a young man. That was my Sunday school teacher. I used to listen to him tell about Jesus, tell about the Bible. So I knew he knew. But his sins talked him right back out of what at one time God or the preacher or somebody had talked him in. And the question that I have is, could it happen to you? Who... You don't have to raise your hand. Who still gets talked to by their sin? And does your sin tell you, you need to pray more, you need to visit with Jesus more, you need to read your Bible more? Is that what your sin tells you to do? Job chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Is there any doubt in our minds who Job is and what kind of person he is? No. God's made it very, very clear. Uh, by the way, that there's a Watchman broadcast coming out today. 
kind of deals along these same lines a little bit. But he was a perfect and upright man and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. And his substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses. That's enough to pay a bill, isn't it? I mean, back then, if you went to see a doctor, he usually didn't take your medical insurance because you didn't have any, but he would take one of them camels as payment, wouldn't he? So does he have enough camels to pay for if he's got to have a tooth pulled? Does he got enough camels to pay for it? Sure he does. And he had a very great household so that his, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. Job was not only the kind of man that was concerned about his own position with God Almighty, he was concerned about his family's position with God Almighty. He cared. He wasn't one of these liberals that said, well, I'll let my children grow up and decide whether they're going to believe in God or not. Does that ever work? In fact, that's just being a lazy parent. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know what that verse doesn't say? Train up a child in the way he goes, and when he turns 18, he won't turn from it. It doesn't say that. Because we all know what happens when we turned 18. We turned away from it, didn't we? He didn't say when they turn 18. He said when he is old, he'll not depart from it. And the older I get, the less that I want to go to hell. Amen. Let's pray. And then let's find out what Satan thinks about all this. Father, I ask for your help to preach this. I believe, God, that you laid this on my heart this morning. And I was not prepared to preach it. So, Father, anybody that benefits from this, it'll have to be from your spirit and your word. And it won't be me in the amount of time preparing. But I believe, God, this is what you laid on my heart. This is what you made very, very clear to me. You gave me an understanding, God, that I've, I've known this story for most of my life, but you just sort of made it click today. Now, some may already know this, but I just never thought of it this way until now. And I plainly see what the devil's doing. I get it. And Father, I want to be like Job. I don't want to be like Job's friends. And I don't want to listen to Job's friends. I want to be like Job. So bless me today. Because I need this. Father, you know how fearful I get. When it comes to the future. And Father, we live in perilous times. There are people in this country right now that want to destroy all the corruption that's in this country and start all over again. And God, that's going to be bloody. And I don't think we're prepared for that. These are very, un these are very uncertain, shaky perilous times. 
But these are the times, Father, where you're going to prove who is and who isn't on the Lord's side. And there's a lot of people who are faking it right now. A lot of preachers faking it. And God, please, don't let that be me. Help me to trust you and never, never curse you. Help me to do that, I pray in Jesus' name. Bless your people this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Now, Job chapter 1, verse 6. If you were to, I'm not going to do this, but if you were to go over to Genesis chapter 3, then you would understand how the devil works a little bit. He's serpent. He's a serpent. He's more subtle than any beast of the field. He never, the serpent never came right out and said, I dare you to eat that fruit. In fact, he, he never said anything like that. He's more subtle than that. He did not force Eve to eat that fruit. He did not shove it down her throat. He did not threaten her in any way. He basically just turned her on. He turned her on. And once he did that, she went for it. That subtle. Go back to Genesis 3 and look at that and show me any place in there where the devil said, if you don't eat this, I'm going to, I'm going to choke you. Or I'll kill you. Or I'll kill your family. He didn't do anything like that. He didn't threaten her. Didn't. He enticed her. He seduced her. And that's how she fell for it. So that's one way the devil works. Another way that he works is to increase deadly persecution against you. Taking things away from you. Stealing away your family. Stealing away your finances. Stealing away relationships that you have. Stealing away your own health. I've known people who have suffered greatly in their lives, been in agony and pain, and still they would not curse God and die. They just praised Him and said, God is either going to heal me in this life or He's going to heal me in the next. One way or the other, I'm not turning my back on God. It's, it's too late. I'm not turning my back on God. Amen. But it just, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. This is how he does it. There are people. See, I've been studying. I've been studying these false prophets all week that promise everybody that they're always going to be healthy and that they're going to be mega millionaire wealthy and they're going to have everything going their way and there's not going to be anything negative in their life if they just think positive thoughts and say positive words and it's basically a form of witchcraft. And yes, it works for Joel Osteen. Because he's going to sell you the Joel Osteen Inspiration Cube. Have you seen that commercial? Stupidest thing. I've got, I've got one. I don't have it with me. But I call it the Mike Hoggard Stupid Cube. And for your love gift of one billion dollars, you can have it. I only need to sell one. And I call it the stupid cube because it's a Rubik's cube. And if you can't get it right, like I never could, you just take a screwdriver and take it apart and put it back together the way it's supposed to go. That's how I did it. That's on the Watchman broadcast coming out today. But I've been studying these, I've been studying these false prophets. And I'm telling you, they are setting people up for a great fall. They're telling them that God promises them health and wealth and prosperity, and when it doesn't happen, you have some people who say, God's a liar, God's a joke, the Bible's a lie, I will never fall for that again. And they kick out. So that's what the devil did. Job chapter 1 verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? 
You know what I have in my mind? I've got it in my mind that somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 to 95 percent of people who are in church this morning are fair weather Christians. They serve God or serve whatever as long as things go well for them. But the moment it turns bad, they leave. Now, you say, well, I don't know if I believe that. Then turn to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. In the parable of the seed and the sower, he said in verse 14, the sower soweth the word. These are they by the wayside, verse 15, where the word is sown. But when they have heard that Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was uh, sown in their hearts. In verse 16, and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. You know what they do? They leave. And they say, well, I, I read Joel Osteen's book, Your Best Life Now, and I read in there that if I do all this right, then God will bless me with riches and great health. And none of that has happened to me. And the only answer I get is, it must be my fault. I'm not serving this. And they kick out. The devil thinks that of Job. So verse 9 of Job chapter 1, Then Satan answered the Lord and said unto him, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not, not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Now we know after this that Satan had all of his sons killed, all of his daughters killed, and that he lost every camel, Every cow, every goat, every sheep, all the servants. He lost everything that he had in this world. And what was Job's response to it? The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, I don't serve God because he's either made me rich or I want him to make me rich. I serve God because I love him. I serve God because he has given me life everlasting in heaven. And what did it cost me? Not a thing. What did it cost God? His only begotten son. So that was Satan's plan A. Plan A didn't work. So now plan B. Job chapter 2 verse 1. And I, I, I don't have anybody in mind I'm preaching this to. I didn't. I didn't sit and think, well, you know, so-and-so may, may need to hear this, or I think somebody needs to hear this. I'm positive that somebody, somebody here or online needs to hear it. I don't know who it is. Don't need to know. But maybe you're going to, maybe you are already there now, or you are about to be in a situation where everything has been taken from you. You've lost it all. And the devil jumped on you and said, See, this is what you get for serving God. I 
am in great fear that we're about to lose our whole country. Can I hear God's people say amen to that? Our country that our forefathers bled and died for. That those men at Omaha Beach jumped out and shed their life and spilled their guts all over that beach. So that America and liberty could be defended and won. The liberties that we have in this country were bought and paid for by the blood and the sweat of those who worked and died to earn it. And we are about to lose it all. If I, if I lose everything that I hold precious in this country, the question is, will I still serve God? Because you know what they're going to say? See, that's all you right-wing people, you serve God for nothing. All that was taken away from you and now you have nothing. Where's your God? Remember what they said to Jesus when he was on the cross? He said he's God's son. He said he served God. Then why doesn't God save him and bring him down off of that cross? See, that's what you're going to hear. See, it's not just the devil either. We're fixing to find out. He's got his people everywhere. Let me ask you a question. Are there people in this country who would love to kill all the Christians? So Job chapter 2 verse 1, again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, from whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. Boom. And that's what hit me on the way over here this morning. Curse God and get it over with. I don't know if you've ever had the devil tell you, just curse God and get it over with. And you won't have any more problems. People that shoot themselves or try some other way of committing suicide you know why they do that they think that their misery and their pain is going to end when they pull that trigger but it won't it won't it'll only begin for eternity. And it will be worse than any hell that you think you went through on this earth. It will be a billion times worse. And there will be no end to it. There is no suicide in hell. He said, curse, let, he will curse thee now to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he is, thine, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So God afflicted, or excuse me, the devil afflicted Job. Took his health away. The Bible says that great big boils, you know what those are, they're just pus-filled infections all over his body. Legs, backside, back, front, arms, face, he took a piece of pottery and scraped the infection off. And so in verse 9, 
Job's three friends. Now, people, maybe you need to thin out your Facebook friends. Maybe you need to cull some of those people. Because some of those people don't believe the way you believe. Or even some family members don't believe what you believe. Look at the advice of Job's three friends. Job chapter 2 verse 9, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. His wife said that to him. Then, but he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. I'm going to tell you what, you've got to be really sick in order to say that to your wife. You've got to really not care about the consequences. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all of this did not Job sin with his lips. The point that Satan made clear was, I bet you that Job will curse you, God, to your face. That was his plan. All this time you're putting on a Christian show. You're showing like, oh, you're Mr. Faithful. You tithe, you attend church. While you were raised in Sunday school, you can quote Bible verses, you know all the apostles' names, and all of that stuff. But when everything starts going against you and everything starts turning, everybody starts turning their back on you and all your friends have left and your health is gone and all your money is gone and there's nothing left, will you still serve God? Let me tell you, God's people never stop serving God. He said, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place. Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite. For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. But th did they comfort him? No. They chastised him. Those guys spent days telling Job how rotten he is. Uh, Job, if you had been serving God all along, then God wouldn't do this to you. Obviously, Job, there is sin in your life. Why don't you just confess it and get it out of the way? But in all this, Job knew that he was innocent. He had done nothing against God. You know who Job's three friends are, don't you? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. See, that's the purpose. Let's say that, let's say that some people here listening to me online or here, let's say that you've got a problem with liquor. And all liquor's wanting to do is get you to turn your back on God. And the devil will show up with a liquor bottle and say, it would just feel so much better if you would drink this. Don't worry about the consequences. Just drink this. You'd feel so much better. Or your neighbor, she can get meth. And you know your neighbor's got methamphetamine. And your neighbor's going, hey, you want some meth? And the devil says, it'll feel so, you'll feel so much better 
if you just take meth. You want some cocaine? Yeah, we can get you some cocaine. You want some heroin? Oh, heroin. Oh, we got lots of heroin, and it's just loaded with fentanyl. We can fix you up in a hurry. You know, I've never taken heroin a day in my life, but I bet you I could make probably three to four phone calls and find whatever I wanted. Or here's the devil. Going, you're sitting down at the computer and you're going, hey, there's some mighty pretty ladies on the internet. Let me take you to their website. And every one of those things are designed to get you to do one thing. Curse God and die. And the devil is relentless. He doesn't let up. He doesn't quit. Oh, you might get rest for a season. But he's coming back. Am I right so far? He's trying to get you. A ch I'm preaching to church people today. He's trying to get you to curse God. Then he wins. In all of that, did Job curse God? No. Job 19.25. Job said, For I know that my Redeemer liveth. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. That's what Job said. And did, did Jesus ever come in Job's life? No. But he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And I will turn away all of the pleasures of sin for the season of this life. So that I can have an everlasting joy with Jesus in heaven. Uh, and yes, today in the Watchman broadcast, I'm making fun of Joel Osteen's inspiration cube. Because you know what it's full of? It's full of Joel Osteen. But not scripture. Scripture. Job is the Savior. Job is the one that your wife has left, your dog's died, all of your, you've lost your job, and you hit a button. Joel says three sentences, and all of a sudden, your wife comes back, your dog comes back to life, and you get another job. For your love gift of only $39.95, plus $10 shipping and handling. He's got to fix all your problems. It doesn't work that way. Second Chronicles, chapter 34. I'm going to read some verses to you pretty quickly. Go inquire of the Lord for me and for them that are left in Israel and Judah concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured upon us because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do after all that is written in this book. The purpose of Satan taking everything away from Job his wife telling him, curse God and die. His friends telling him, Job, you've sinned. It's obviously your fault. Why don't you just give up? The purpose of all of that is to get them to shut their Bibles and never go back to it again. How many of you know somebody? How many of you know somebody that used to go to church and Job's friends got to them and now they ain't never coming back? That man that I told you about, that, that was my Sunday school teacher. More than likely, he's never coming back. I don't know if he's still alive or not. Matthew 24, 11. 
Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Who gets saved? The ones who quit? The ones who endure. Revelation 3.10 Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. John 15.9 As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Acts 14.22 Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Tribulation is not behind you, my friends. It's ahead of you. The worst tribulations are not behind you. They are ahead of you. Roy, since you're standing there, how close have you come on certain days to getting a bottle of Jack? He drove, he left his house one day and was headed to the liquor store. And the Holy Ghost pulled his car in at the hospital and made him sit there until he decided to just go back home. That's how close he came. Some of you didn't even stop for that. You just gave in. Romans 11.22 Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in His goodness, otherwise thou shalt also be cut off. Colossians 1.23 If you continue in the faith grounded and settled, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Continue in the faith. Continue. Who in here would raise their hand and admit that they've sinned since they got saved? The purpose of that was the devil trying to get you to say, Well, I've blown it. There's no use me trying to go to God now. I might as well give up and quit. Does that sound familiar? First Timothy 2.15, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith. First Timothy 4.16, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. You see, this is about not giving up, not quitting, not stopping. It's The corruption that took place on election night. I don't know if you watched Sidney Powell and her press conference. I encourage you to go watch that. They have them dead to rights on stealing the election. They have the proof. They caught their hand doing it. They have rock solid proof that this election was stolen. And yet they're still going to put Joe Biden in office. And I know, a hundred, I know a million people that showed up at the White House last weekend that says, over our dead bodies. Now, do you think the stock markets are going to rise on that day? You think your 401k is going to jump? We've already got COVID so bad now, I don't know how people have kept their jobs. We're at the tipping point. It won't take much before all of us are beggars. Walmart had two buckets of survival food in the bottom shelf. I grabbed both of them. Never know. 1 John 2, 24. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that, by the way, don't show up at my house asking for them, all right? <laughs> no. 
I'll give you a bite. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. Bottom line is the devil's job is to make you so absolutely miserable. Listen to me now. That you get mad at God. You get mad at God. I've been mad at God. I know others that have been mad at God. God had mercy on them. And God sustained them and God blessed them. But the devil's point is to try to get you to curse God and quit. You know why? Because you're in God's army. And God's army is not going to lose. So God said to Job... Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. You know what happened? Exactly that. Job 42, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she asses. He also had seven sons and three daughters. The latter end of Job was better than even it was before the devil stole it all away. Do you know what our latter end is? Heaven. So what if the devil took away everything that you had here in this life? Are you still going to serve God? Let's bow our heads. This morning, I haven't done this in a while. So far, my doctor didn't call, did he, Matthew? I, I didn't figure he would. Haven't done this in a while, but maybe you're here and the devil's rattled your cage a little bit. Maybe he's got you a little worried about what's going to happen. Maybe he's got you a little uptight. Scared. And you've thought about quitting. You've thought about giving in. Those thoughts will come. Joel, Joel Osteen will tell you that if you have those thoughts, then God can't bless you. I'm one of these that believes I have those thoughts and God's blessed me anyway. And if it, it's the fact that if you saved yourself, then you have to keep yourself. But if God saved you, then it's going to be God who keeps you. Who kept Job? God did. And he'll keep you too. So this morning, I'm going to open up these benches down here. And if anybody here, your three friends, your three amigos, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, trying to talk you out of serving God. The devil trying to tell you, curse God and die and get it over with. And you'd like to come down here and just spend a little time with God and say, God, don't let that happen to me. God, I like my sin, but I don't like hell and I don't want to go there. So maybe would you come this morning, in obedience to the Holy Spirit. Come down and spend a little time with Jesus this morning. Would you do that?
God will keep you. I promise you he will. God will help you. I promise you he will. God won't let you curse him. How do you think Paul did it? Did he do it on his own strength? No. How do you think Barnabas was able to sing in that prison cell? Do it on his own strength? No. God helped him. Are you going to make it if God takes family members away from you? Are you going to keep serving God if your kids turn their back on Jesus and start living for the devil? Because that's happening right now with some families. That's happening right now with some families. Are you still going to serve God whether the people that you love the most in this world turn their back on Him? Father, we all come before you today. And all of us, Father, have received these things at the devil's hand. He's stolen things from us. You allowed him to do it. He's weakened us in our flesh. You allowed him to do it. He threatens to take everything away. You allowed him to do that. And Father, I know that some people, when that happened, they cursed God. But you knew they would anyway. And Father, I pray for these That they, God, that you would give them your sweet promise that you won't let them go. You won't turn your back on them. You won't let them fall away. Because, Father, I know me. And I don't have the courage or the strength in me to carry on and continue on. I know, God, that when it's time, you are going to be strong in me. And Father, my prayer for all of these that have come to pray, and God, that you would give them that assurance to know that you will never leave them, you will never forsake them, and as you did unto Job, their latter end shall be far greater than their beginning. Far greater. Help us to keep our eyes on the prize. Help us, dear God, to cast off the sin that doth so easily beset us. And help us all to run the race with patience. And forgive us, Father. For doubt, forgive us for sin, forgive us for even thinking about walking away from you. There's too much to lose and everything to gain. Bless your people and hear their prayer. Blessed be the name of the Lord and bless your word and magnify it even above your name. We pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Lord bless you this morning. Are you glad you came to God's house? Say Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Come back. Be with us three o'clock.